I'm Diffie Laura White. Keitlinger. <laughs> Welcome to <laughs> Welcome to What We Thought Would Happen. Yay. We and, have our first foursome. Oh my God. This is so great. So to speak. Really? We are, uh-huh. yes. We have with us today two brilliant sketch comics. Actors, writers, and topless chantuses, <laughs> may I welcome, please, <laughs> and Daniel, help me welcome, with, with a, uh, what, what, a sinkhole welcome, to the two-headed dog, <laughs> Yay. Yay. Mark Fight and Jim Turner. Yay. Yay. Hi, thank you. Thank you. The Thanks sinkhole. That's, we feel comfortable. <laughs> well, we're upstairs. Sinkhole. I'm yeah. trying to think of, no, this isn't, this is pretty nice in here. We finally have air conditioning in here, so it's not... Um, and you guys are part of a performing group, right? Comedy troupe? Is that what you call? Yep. No, we say sketch group? I, I would say a comedy group. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we've ever referred to ourselves as sketch, Defined though it. that's really what we are. Yeah. You write, you write sketches for yourself? Yeah. We, we, writing is, is a term we use loosely. <laughs> we, uh, we improvise. Uh, uh-huh. we, we wear funny clothes. Mm-hmm. That's, our, that's where we start. Mm-hmm. Funny characters. Mm-hmm. And we improvise. And then if it goes well, we try to remember what it was. And then we might have Gruber type it out a few years later. Uh-huh. And that's, uh, that's the extent of our writing. Just for nostalgia. Yeah. Type just, it out, just, just for the, for it's the, not really written. Yeah. Well, it's, it's mostly... It's there's an idea spot. okay let's start with that idea and then we do the show oh man that got a good laugh mm-hmm. what well, was i don't remember what it was <laughs> <laughs> well i remember seeing you guys at luna park no i'm sorry not luna park it was the largo on mel when it was on i think fairfax, fairfax at largo. Yeah. yeah and you were nearly naked and dancing on tables Hell you had that your was underwears on sachet that was our male uh erotic man dancing routine <gasps> And exactly. Sachet started out just Jim and I, but that yes. it evolved over the years, even to a Lucha Vavum appearance, where it was Sachet Gigante, <laughs> where there was about 15 of us, maybe more. Oh, 20. 20 of us. Yes. Wow. And it was, it was something. Oh, and the amazing. idea was that what we told people was dress in a thing that when people look at you come on stage, they go, oh, the postman. Oh, a mm. professor. Oh, oh, the grad. Sort something of a village that, people nod. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Just a nod, a slight o- nod. Some kind yeah. of occupation. But I like then that. grew crazy, like Jim Hodgson doing the beekeeper. And he had <laughs> a beekeeper hat. Mm. And it was elaborate. He, he also did a butcher with a complete with a platter of yes. raw oh. meat. Yeah. yeah, bloody apron, all of it. Oh, my Lord. I saw a band on Halloween, and they would always have a Halloween competition. But one year, the whole band, they dressed as butchers. They had bloody aprons. Oh. But they had someone running through the audience with a chainsaw. Wow. Like, going? Like, with the, not the blade, the chains going, but with the, wow. the sound. It was this psycho zombie woman. Wow. So you're trying to enjoy this concert while a life-threatening situation is happening constantly behind you. Oh, my God. Ooh, well, no, Jim no. And I, I loved it. Yeah, I hate it. Oh, it was thrilling. Jim Turner and I were in a movie where there were bloody aprons, and it wasn't a horror film. What was the... Who who died? It was kicking and screaming. Shut yeah. up. Mm-hmm. What was the bloody apron part? A the kids baby? were the kids were Italian, Italian, and helping for a butcher. <laughs> yeah, uh, working well, for the mafia. <laughs> what they, what Will Ferrell brings the kids in. He, he's coaching a team, and then a couple Italians show up, I guess, mm-hmm. and just play with the kids. And they go, "Oh, oh, these guys actually know how to play." Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then he ends up playing his dad, played by Robert Duvall. Mm-hmm. And I, I do. They win the big game, of course. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> and I had an idea. I don't even know if because I hadn't seen the movie, but I had an idea that, you know, since it's such a trope to be hit in the crotch with a soccer ball, <laughs> that, that uh, we all give our credits being hit in the crotch. Did you get yours? Yeah. On film? <laughs> well, I think, I don't know. Did they ever use it? I don't know if they did it, but we all set our credits. Said, I played this character and then I get hit in the crotch and uh-huh. everybody gets hit in the crotch. I don't know if they used it. Did they? Probably not. Oh, I don't well, think they did. Of when did we, where did we shoot that? Was that on the field? No, it was just when we wherever we were standing. No, we did it in somebody's backyard. Yeah. There was a backyard scene mm-hmm. that was taking place at Will Ferrell's house. Oh, right. And then they they set up a thing where we all got I forgot about This getting... sounds so suspect. Like you took a crotch shot in someone's backyard. Yeah, yeah. All but right. wait, but so they didn't use on it in camera. the credits, I guess. Ah, damn, that's a shame. Where did you... Well, you haven't seen the movie. All the parents are basically gone. Oh, great. We we barely exist. And we all had names and and uh, kids. Our kids were in the thing and we were identified with the kid. Uh-huh. Yes. So there scene. should have been plenty of room for the crotch shots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you would think. Just Wait. in the credits, for God's sake. But like actor kids... Yeah. Is that weird to be around? I always think it's strange to be like around acting kids. Is that not? Sometimes. I haven't done too much of that. Yeah. 
Where did you go? Did you meet them as a You know, they don't like unit? to kiss on the first <laughs> on the <laughs> first day of shooting. They, you have to wait. To, mm-hmm. Look should see look at Jim's face looking at me. Yeah. Did you guys meet did you meet them as a <laughs> as the three dogs? As the two dogs, excuse me? No, I met well, first of all, I met Mark uh, in Juvie. We had <laughs> Yeah, we know I thought we weren't gonna talk about this. I know. Well yes. here's the thing. We were bowling and we left with our shoes on, so we we basically stole our bowling shoes. Uh-huh. It's a misdemeanor. Yeah. Yeah. Is count. it? I fell in love. He didn't. What happened? I'm not going to go. Where was the breakdown? I'm not going to go again. Uh, it was her bowling game. I mean, yeah. she sucked. Know. You know. It was because Wait, her shoe you size fell in was... love with him and you pursued and dated Gruber. Mm-hmm. And that's somebody's just, there's, next. There's, there's just but one. you're married. You were married. Wait <laughs> a minute. Only I'm one married. Way out of this. <laughs> there's only timing. One way out of timing. This, right? uh... <laughs> but y'all were performing. Is that where you met Laura? I think so. I guess. I mean, in the. Late eighties, early nineties, there was all the comedy crossover, all the Dave Rath people, yeah. all the San Francisco people coming down here. You know, yeah. Uh, three of clubs. Did you guys ever play that? Was I that, never did. No. I, I didn't do three. The, the three clubs. We've done it more recently, but not oh. back until then. we did that thing. I saw one show at the three, three clubs. Oh. I think I met you probably at Largo. Oh, okay. I think on for Fairfax. sure, early Largo on that Fairfax. That's where I kind of met everybody in, yeah. in this little comedy thing. Dana and Coming Hussein through. and yeah. Janine. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. That's you know, right. That's, that's, that's where, where we were. it happened. You two were performing in Des Moines together? No. Uh, no? We Which didn't both... know each other in Iowa. The Higgins Boys and Gruber were performing in Des Moines, okay, who see. became our associates out here later. You're from Des Moines, too? I'm from Des Moines. Where are you from? Uh, I was born in the Quad Cities on the Illinois side, okay. but grew up mostly in Iowa City. I swear I was paying attention. Okay, yeah. I yeah, probably, yeah, yeah, most of it. You uh, most yeah. of it. But you guys, you guys met in L.A. No, I didn't meet you then. Yeah. But he, aud- he auditioned. He uh, <laughs> I auditioned for Jim to be Jim's personal valet. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't chaperone. Usher, Usher. Sorry. Usher. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, I knew who they, Jim was because he was in a thing called Duck's Breath mystery theater and they would come back to iowa to do their shows because they all were from there can we talk about ushers really fast because we just performed at the theater where all the ushers are like really old ladies right like grandmas with flashlights and Mm -hmm. that is my plan b (laughs) do you know what i mean yeah i'm gonna fall you'll do anything to be in a caftan (laughs) no they have to wear suits oh they're dressed like the the, geffen yeah that's the geffen but they're dressed like the Uh. philip morris (laughs) <laughs> cigarette boy oh i love that but they're 90 that's wow. cool that's and they so. but they understand the danger of falling you know what i mean like sure. falling and breaking a fucking hip so they they're real fast on the flashlight i love when that. you're going up and down the stairs where were you guys be terrific yeah where, where did you get you and margaret play just recently we, that was at the fitzgerald in st paul oh great great but shout out to the usher. I, it's disrespectful to call the octogenarian an usherette. Is it? Right? I don't know. Maybe they might like it. Or just give yeah. them the respect of usher. I think, yeah. You should then be I think of the musician. So I would say yeah, usherette. Yeah, no. Okay, never mind. As a performer, what were you watching when you were like a kid? What got you into performing? Were you wanting to be an actor? Were you stand-up comedian or none of that? You just kind of um, I, I, neither one of us ever were stand-ups. Mm-hmm. And I don't think we we were we were. We I tried. No... You did. You did. did. Oh, what when was I was it? twenty-nine, uh-huh. I'd been doing this comedy group Duxbeth for many years, mm-hmm. and I was trying to sort of. I'm different than you guys, mm-hmm. and and I always used to do characters just like we do now, all costume, blah blah blah. And I wanted to like, God, I got to do something simple. Mm-hmm. And I think that this happened. And after the Adrian Ballou tour, I went, I need to reduce this to something oh. I can do. And I created a thing called the 29-year-old man. So it's already, <laughs> okay, that's a character. Sure. It's not yeah. Jim Turner. Right. Uh-huh. You're the 29-year-old man. Right. And I wrote what I thought were <laughs> jokes. And I did it three or four times. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was too real. Oh, just horrible. Uh-huh. I just didn't... Uh. What were you writing about? Were you writing about things? I don't even... You know, I pro- I probably have a file at home, 29-year-old man. Well, you're man. doing it kind of ironically, like uh, Neil Hamburger, like like a, like a cop. Like no. 29. No. You should have tried that. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, like it, making fun of stand-ups, but you, but you weren't really. And I had convinced the guys in Duck's Breath to let me do that, because I, I, went, I went on tour with Adrian Ballou, who was a guitar player. Oh, he's amazing, yeah. For six weeks, and it was horrible. No. <laughs> it was really, 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 really hard. You're performing comedy, and he's a musical act. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Was he in King Crimson? He was. Yeah. 
He was in King Crimson. He was in Talking Heads. Yeah, yeah. He wow. did Remain in Light. Oh, I love it. He that. was the big, the live show. He was the big star of that show. Sure. Mm-hmm. Eno used him. Bowie used him. Frank wow. Zappa. Wow, wow, wow. Unbelievable guitar player. And he's a guitar god. So when people come to see him, they want to see and, guitar yeah. god. Oh, yes. no. Nobody they could open. want to see who's this? No, who's right. this motherfucker no in one, costumes? No one right. could open for him. This That's guy not said you. he was Liberace. Is right. he Liberace? <laughs> so when I came off and that, Cody is so maybe the 29 year old man could open for him. Yeah, but no. But that's terrible, yeah. So, so Duck's Breath was still performing, and mm-hmm. I joined up with them, mm-hmm. and I said, I've been kind of working on this thing called The 29-Year-Old Man, and I want to do it. And they went, okay. And I did it like three times at shows, and they went, Jim, we don't know what it is. Uh-huh. Do you know what it is? <laughs> oh. Not really. I'll find it. I'll find the place. Mm-hmm. And then you opened for Adrian Ballou, the guitar god. I had come off, off Adrian. Of that, oh, my God. The 29-year-old man was an inspiration to, From. to do. So oh, you I already see. knew it didn't work. <laughs> but, but for Dutch <laughs> Breath, you thought maybe we'll give it one more shot. Six weeks of it wow, with Adrian. That's devotion. Wasn't that's dedication. Enough. He's committed. Yeah, that's nice. Well, we've been doing stuff that doesn't work for 30 years. Is that, <laughs> yeah, we stick with it. A We're not cor- quitters. It's a career built on that. <laughs> Absolutely. Did you start as a sketch performer? Yeah. Or yeah. You don't even hesitate to use that word. I mean, I guess they're sketches, but we're not like a sketch, a traditional improv group or mm-hmm. sketch group. We we like characters mm-hmm. and develop a, a sketch is developed through that. Well, you've but, both done like a lot of movie and TV work. What's more fun? I feel like movies that are scarier, like in the execution of being a character. Uh, uh, good question. I mean, there's stress for a movie and TV because you're getting paid and it's supposed to be professional. Mm-hmm. Um, supposed to. <laughs> you know, so that's a lot of pressure on us. Uh-huh. That's a really, you really intense... Wake up and get high yeah, and then go... <laughs> but, that's a long uh, list of expectations. Yeah, but at our live shows, obviously, and you know how it is when it's you, your people and you're doing your thing and you're yeah. comfortable with it, I don't think we get too stressed out. Theater, I, I, still, I don't do a lot of theater anymore, but I, I did a lot. And I think I would was always a little nervous and scared, you know, just in terms of forgetting lines really oh, which is again right. something we don't worry about in two-headed dog oh doing straight theater yeah is frightening isn't that insane i feel like it's nuts to have to say the same thing like that's the mental part right now do it again exactly the same but yeah. 30 times that's mental oh, yeah I, I have a hard time with lines in, in movies and and tv and stuff and i have sort of perfected for me writing them out mm-hmm. um you know on like when i play a lawyer oh if there's a legal pad there hilarious oh look out oh, excuse me yes. uh if i may <laughs> that's uh-huh. so good i always have a hard time with lines i can't even remember my act a lot of times that i've done a thousand times when, but, when i'm on stage stand up you can have notes i yeah. think it's totally fine to have notes. joan rivers had actual cue cards along the stage to the bitter end mm-hmm. like forever mm-hmm. oh wow huge yeah. like what you buy at the grocery store like like yeah. if you're making a student council poster right <laughs> that wow. bullshit which is like a big black marker and then just did she have one word uh, it was hard to tell. I've asked people who worked with her, uh-huh. and it would be sometimes it would just be like triggers, or it would be the whole thing. Uh-huh. I've tried to figure out if she worked from left to right because uh-huh. if you watched her live, you can't tell. Yeah, that's she's great. so fast and moving around that you can't see her reference it. I bet a lot of it's simply that it's there. Correct is enough. Oh, that's true. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. yeah, I can always grab it out of there. Right, yeah. right. But I have. There's to have that it in famous my story of Marlon Brando. What in Godfather? He had to eat the script. Where <laughs> he didn't have to, but he, God, he was hungry. <laughs> Big white, like like cue cards on somebody's coat or yes. in front of somebody's coat. Uh-huh. Uh, standing in front of him. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Do y'all have, as a group, as a team, do you have like a ritual or that anything before? Like you have to get the like, who'd you write before a show? Do you pray? Laura, this is. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Laura, please. We okay, did. We I beg your pardon. Sorry. We should have prayed before this show. Sorry. Hail Satan. No. Okay. We, we got we it all the way. We don't do anything. Nothing. No. We, mostly it's so frantic mm-hmm. when we do a show. It's so frantic just before. A, Gruber, um, who's in all of our shows. Mm-hmm. Dave Allen. Is he? <laughs> he, first of all, he spent. 40 minutes telling somebody who had one line uh-huh. off camera mm. why they're there. He gives them all their backstory. Oh, mm. man. Then he goes out and standing in the parking lot smoking a cigarette. I like this guy. He's professional. He's, That's he's the best. We don't have a lot of props, but we have a lot of costumes because mm-hmm. we like, we again, we like to go deep. Mm-hmm. I mean, deep mm-hmm. into character. So we're usually laying out our stuff and trying to remember the order and that kind of stuff. So, you know, and inevitably we, we start late, but when the, you know, <laughs> the music comes on, it's our cue to, to uh-huh. get out there and uh, I love that we just go that, like, <laughs> it kind of helps we yeah. just did a show a couple about a month ago up in 
Fraser Park. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a theater in the woods thing. Mm -hmm. And we got to it a dog back together. We haven't done a show in years. Mm -hmm. pre, and Craig pre Anton was going to come back and uh -huh. do it, but then Great. he was the chair of the theater department and he couldn't. Mm -hmm. And there were the three of us and there were two bits that Gruber simply couldn't get his clothing on. He couldn't mm -hmm. fit in he didn't anymore. Fit. He had, so oh, he just oh, didn't yeah. come out. <laughs> <laughs> he just didn't come uh -huh. out on stage until the very end of the bit. Mm -hmm. um, so he gained weight? Is that it? Yeah, he had put on some COVID pounds oh, over sure. the years, oh, and so he didn't funny. bother to try on the costume ahead of time, which, why would he? None of us would have. Um, but he couldn't get his pants on. He couldn't get the <laughs> jacket on, so he was... Didn't didn't come out That's in time. The first Eventually, time he tried those on. <laughs> yeah, in all because the they had been stored at Jim's house, and he's been in Salt Lake City. So he eventually he did come out. He was supposed to be this butler in a black and white tuxedo. He eventually came out in like brown pants and a t-shirt, and uh, just went for it. It works. But, Is it weird to because a band or any kind of group project? It's like you do get a rhythm or a familiarity with people, even after just like a break like that. Are you like okay, here we go? Do you stop trusting each other, or is there like a moment where you're like, we got this, it's fine. I think we're pretty comfortable. Yeah. Well, I think we're all pretty comfortable about doing it together for we were years. Yeah, we were comfortable with him not coming out. Yeah, so that, I was going to say, like, in that moment, are you like, well, we'll just, so we got funny. this. We don't need it. It wasn't not really a big, again, if it was a traditional theater mm -hmm. or, or, right. or something like that, it would have been a disaster. But for us, right. it's kind of like, yeah. all right, well, we'll just dick around a few more we're minutes. We're in the woods. I love yeah. the backstory yeah. thing. I would, I would say that, like, the parts that I would ever be up for now as a middle-aged and older woman it's always it would be like the woman in a horror film giving backstory like the the old nut giving backstory to the new couple oh you kids uh you moved into the royston place huh <laughs> well you can pay me to go in there after mm -hmm. what happened to the family what the dad did to those kids <laughs> anyway uh, welcome it was to the 10 neighborhood. years ago tonight, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly exactly all the backstory i'm gonna get you a prop cigarette okay i need for oh this. yeah yeah right yeah. That way you can like warn us. Yeah. You picture with a cigarette holder up. or just a raw cigarette? I see a raw cigarette on a, yeah. uh, she's on the porch, but there's a picket right. fence separating her from the neighbor she's warning because nobody goes into nice. the lawyer's yard, I'll right? Nice. I, 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 mm -hmm. Just so they know I'm doing a character also because I'm so bad at it. Uh, so, you know, uh, <laughs> I know you're the new people in town. Uh, mm -hmm. You can tell because I've got a cigarette and I'm old. And then are uh, you going to snuff the cigarette out or are you going to flick she's it? She's going to so swallow it. Swallow oh, I guess it. you put it on nice. her tongue and I think it. it's an ash, giant ashtray filled with cigarettes. Nice. Well, no, I'm running She's into... Gotta... Jim, I'm running into them at the hardware store. How <laughs> yeah. the hell can I do that? Jim, pay attention. Uh, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, oh, I see it. You're, You're right. a new couple that just moved in, huh? Yeah, I see it. Yeah. We had one of those houses in our neighborhood. Yeah. And it was just the dude with the CB radio. In all Ooh. honesty, that was the only weird thing going on. Are you sure? Well, actually, the real story is that he walked in on his wife having an affair with his best friend Oof. in their house late at night while he was on the CB radio. But the, these people were all in their 70s. Wow. Which is gross. Oof. Ooh, yeah. Right. Let's not knock people in their seventies. I'm saying yeah. that those kind of like shenanigans are, are you know what I mean? Well, like, that's kind of ageist. You know, we're all in our seventies. I'm not here. ageist. I'll fuck old man. You're not in your seventies. <laughs> I am. I'm 41. I'm in the. I'm okay. in the bracket. I know. You're there. I always ask everyone what they were, how they fit in in high school. Were you a jock? Were you popular? What was your scoop in high school? Mark, you're first. I was sort of a. I probably a dork. Oh, that yeah? was yeah. You know, it was late seventies. Mm -hmm. Um, I had the kind of the feathered hair, Fantastic. which was pretty good. Parted in the middle, mm -hmm. kind of longish, and probably my mom probably was still cutting it. I love it. Uh, so it was bad. Uh -huh. Um, I was skinny. I got tall. I was skinny, but I was doing theater. Mm -hmm. So I was pretty. I was kind of accepted in the theater department. I did some shows, and I was pretty hot. Kind mm -hmm. of a hot, mm -hmm. hot deal. You're there. hot now. For a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Bless your heart. Uh -huh. Bless your heart. Uh -huh. But uh, and I, I was. It was my town though. It was Iowa City. I'd been there. Not my whole life, but since ninth grade. So you kind of knew everybody. Uh -huh. It wasn't a giant school. I wasn't really picked on, but I definitely wasn't a jock. And uh, also I had a group of two or three other close buddies uh -huh. from many, many years. Mm -hmm. So we kind of just did our own thing. We didn't go to prom. We didn't really go to watch football games. We played sports, but we didn't like the organized stuff. So we, right. we were sort of... Uh, Fringe, mm -hmm. fringe weirdos. So you were kind of the star. Were you the star of the high school plays also? Or, a or, couple. Yeah. I was uh, Renfield, and I, our yes. friend Rob Spitzer was Dracula. So Amazing. I got to you know eat flies and go cra be crazy mm -hmm. and get my throat ripped out. Have so, you read the actual book Dracula? Uh, uh It's beautiful. Yeah, I think long, long, long ago. Mm -hmm. Did you watch what's that movie? Uh, oh, uh, Renfield. Yeah, with the yes. with the new one with I uh, Cage. It. Yeah, I, I want to see it. No, I it's so funny. Uh, it, I think he's stepping in the table. It's really good. I want to see that. But yeah. I, it's different. But yeah. um, 
Yeah, the Demeter. That's what I was gonna say. Did you watch that movie? Hmm. It's really bad, but it's a it's a to- if you're a Dracula nerd, it's like hmm. a total like uh, it's a nod to, right. to the Dracula book. nerd. But were you, you, were you <laughs> Mark? Were you in choir also? No, 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 no Not choir, band, no, no, no singing, no music. Okay, nope. Can you sing? Um, you have a you, you. I like your voice. Yeah, I, I was a lead Very singer rich. in a band. No Wait a minute. What? No disrespect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you were in a band. I was in a band called Boomer. Um, I have no musical knowledge. Mm. I don't know how to read music clearly. Mm -hmm. I don't really know how to sing music, Mm -hmm. but I had a band of three really great musicians and great singers who sang great harmonies. Wow. The only way I can sing a harmony is if it's somebody else is singing the note that I am singing. I can can find their note and Uh I can match that. Mm -hmm. If they go up, I'll go up with them. If they go down, I'll go down with them. Uh Mm -hmm. So it has to be other people providing the harmony. Mm -hmm. Was this in high school? Huh? Was this in high school? No, no, San Francisco. Um, and uh, <laughs> he skipped, he skipped the high, he he skipped went from high school, school question. San Francisco. <laughs> well, I said high school for Christ's sake. <laughs> high school, high school, high school is different than San Francisco. High school, uh, really. I hated high school. I hated, hated, Why? hated high school. Why? When I grew up, we were in the Air Force family, mm. and then my dad was in radio. So we moved and moved and moved, and I lived in ten different houses by the time I was 11 years old. Mm -hmm. We moved constantly. Canada, Arizona, Colorado, Iowa, 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 different places in (laughs) Iowa. Um, Were you the only child? No, I'm the oldest of three. Uh What kind of radio? What did he do in radio? He was, uh, he got his job the way, very similar to how I've done things, which Mm -hmm. is, hey, can you do that? I don't think so. You're hired. Yeah. he was in a bar. He'd been out looking for work all day mm-hmm. in this little town. I believe it was Esterville, Iowa. And he was having a cigarette and drinking a beer at the bar. And some guy heard him talking and said, are you in radio? Mm-hmm. He goes, no, I, I, I love radio. <laughs> Here's my card. Call me tomorrow. Come. And the guy owned the radio station. Little Amazing. teeny, Little wow. teeny radio station. And he came in. And my dad has a fantastic voice mm-hmm. and I went okay mm-hmm. and he had a jazz show wow. in the afternoons called the turner table cool I and love he it. would play nat king cole sinatra count basie that's what he loved mm-hmm. duke ellington it was an afternoon show for like housewives yep. playing jazz and then he started doing he was a big sports guy great golfer and he started doing broadcasting football games in high school and then he went on to Iowa State and was the color guy and the the football announcer. Mm-hmm. Then we moved back to Des Moines. He was the voice of the Everly Cattle Feeders Amazing. up in Northwest Iowa, teeny little town. Let's hear it. Girls yeah. basketball, the Everly Cattle Feeders. But how did he do it? That's their name. How did he do it? Yeah. I mean, I'm asking you to do an impression of your dad. Did he <laughs> grow up hearing it? I, I don't. Yeah, I did, but I don't. What really, was the jingle? He would like call the was game. Was there a jingle? <laughs> don't do an impression of him. Oh, okay. Uh, I like, said, I told you earlier, we don't improvise. Okay. <laughs> or, uh, I mean, uh, we don't Christ, think of things to if, say. No we don't impression. do anything original. This is your act. Uh, I mean, holy He doesn't shit. even have a costume on right I, now, so I, forget I, it. I can't believe I don't have... The uh, Everly Battlefield or an whatever. Impression of cattle, cattle, cattle feeders. feeders. You do. Cattle feeders. Now, you, how do you think it went, okay. Laura? It, okay, Iowa, that's a little bit, it, that's not Southern, but here we are with the Everly Cattle Feeders. Nice. Oh, see, there you go. Nice. Gotta hit uh, I'm out of here. No, no, no come on, no. Jim. You're I right. tried to get him a job. Remember when Will Ferrell did that basketball movie? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Jimmy Miller, Miller, Jimmy Miller, yeah, who yeah. we know from everything, was producing it. And I went over and dropped off a bunch of stuff, including <laughs> pictures of my dad dressed up in the Everly Cattle Feeders <laughs> outfits because he wore red and white uh-huh. when he did the games. Girls Amazing. basketball okay. in Iowa, huge. I showed him pictures. I said, Jimmy, this is what I do. I'm, I'm from this. Uh-huh. <laughs> Give me a job as one of the announcers. Uh-huh. And he was looking at the pictures. He goes, uh, yeah, well, I mean, what, what, what's your dad? Is this your dad? <laughs> um, why isn't he in the movie? Mm. Oh, and yeah. I went, I, I'm, this is, <laughs> Jimmy, I'm talking about it, me. It's my career. Was, yeah. Can we get him to do this? Yeah. No. And that's why I had my dad film himself. I thought, uh-huh. how fucking great this would be yeah. to have my dad staying with us and going over to the set every day. Yeah. Amazing. But he didn't get it. He did. He was very uncomfortable oh. making up stuff. Oh, I mean, he he knew how to make up a game. Yeah. Watching yeah. the game, he right. could do that. Uh-huh. He wanted to match the lines. 
exactly the way they were written. Oh, yeah. That's what I feel. I'm so bad at acting in general, but I feel like you have to stick to the script. Y'all have both done so much work. Do you take liberty to... You usually stick with it. I mean, if it's a smaller project where you, you're friends with a writer or you're writing it or yeah. something, it's right. easier to stray or improvise. But, uh, you know, I get par- I get intimidated if I'm on a real set. You know, I yeah. want to try to do a good job and try to stick with it. Sometimes, and you can tell, sometimes yeah. they'll give you a little more leeway. See, that's the part I don't know, is like the line between like, well, if we're in a moment, right, that isn't like too distracting. Well, yeah, and you don't want to mess up the other person. I mean, if you're yeah. doing actually doing a scene with somebody else and, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, especially if it's not supposed to be comedy, you don't want to yeah. mess Or the them show. Up. You don't want to mess up the, the show. show. Like, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you just didn't do that line, but yeah. that line actually... Matter something yes. down. Oh, oh, or you added right. a line and we hate it. Just say the line. You're just a stupid actor. Just right. quit. Writing. Oh well, here's what people do to be nice about that, Mark. I've noticed this. Yeah, let's just get one for a safety. Yeah, and then oh, you do what, what you're supposed means. to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and your shit's cut out. Yeah, yeah. I hear that. Someone a lot. has written, and then yeah, go ahead and play with it. Oh, no. <laughs> Cameras aren't rolling, but go ahead. Yeah. What's it like to be working <laughs> so closely with like you know partners in a, or in a group effort, but then you go on to like a TV or movie, and you're working with other actors and you have to reset your rhythm or do you we've do you, done enough of it just you know it's, it's just do you try and get each other in or is it just every man for himself oh uh, we have we have jim's really good at that like with his dad throwing names out suggesting other people uh-huh. putting people together he's he's a really good network mm-hmm. kind of guy uh, uh-huh. i don't i just look out for number one yeah I have <laughs> uh, I, because i don't want to risk getting fired because they'll be like oh wait we can get jim uh we don't <laughs> yeah, get you. exactly so yeah. i yeah. zip You're it so funny um, no, okay. I just did uh, two episodes of Righteous Gemstones. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, amazing. I love that show. Season three, that it's, show's it's amazing. So it's beyond, beyond. It's like fantastic. What, is, yeah. what did you play? I played uh, BJ's stepdad. Oh, my amazing. God. Amazing. With a rat tail. Did little you guys? Rat tail. Did they film I in love Texas? That. Sometimes no, they, they filmed in South Carolina. Okay. Wow. In Charlotte. And um, I got the audition. It was during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And I got really bad at those Zoom auditions. I don't like yeah, those. No. I just read them. Uh-huh. I put my lines up yes. on oh, yeah. the thing. Yep. And I would put a camera here. And I would just scroll through mm-hmm. like this, reading the line. Wow. <laughs> never, I never worked on any of the auditions. I just uh-huh. went, I don't want these jobs. And I got one for Righteous Gemstones, which I hadn't seen. But I knew Danny McBride was in it. And sure. John it's an amazing And show. so, I was like, well, okay. And so, young Adam Devine. I was on mm-hmm. an episode of Workaholics with him. <gasps> You're on Workaholics? Mm-hmm. I worked on a weed farm and that was like our saving grace was like after we fucking picked all the fucking weed we would go and watch Workaholics. Yeah. Go wow. I that. played like the older woman that he was dating and um, made him put on a chin strap. Uh, <laughs> I need to go back and watch. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I learned something about Laura every time. Wow. See this podcast does There's work. a lot to Okay learn. wait. But wait you were talking. I'm sorry. I interrupted. I love no, So that. anyway it, it, Adam it was this mm-hmm. Un, just fantastic, fantastic job. And I didn't know why I, I was hired because mm-hmm. I didn't, I really did. I just read the lines mm-hmm. and I asked the woman playing my wife, what did you do? She goes, I don't know why I got hired. <laughs> I, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. I have no that's idea so what nice. I'm doing. Well, that, that's a good We ca- were atheists and we're like college professors uh-huh. who were there for BJ's baptism. Uh-huh. Now, I don't know if you've seen the baptism scene. They're insane mm-hmm. insane the the set that they built yeah. was like holy mm. fucking shit yeah so anyway we would do the scenes and then they go okay you know it's great it, you know i was in scenes with edie patterson mm. tim baltz john goodman That's edie amazing. patterson oh my god just love her yeah love 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 her yeah but even and john goodman's like a big improviser he's amazing he's who john goodman is like I never saw him. I know on Roseanne he would like help inflate, right? Huh. Mm-hmm. Or you were there. What am I talking yeah, about, yeah, right? Yeah. Which one of you did Roseanne? Me. No, was, I, Laura, I wrote I was, on there. I was no, too. No. no, I wasn't. Yeah, you were. Jim was. Uh, right? Yeah, really short, really short scene. Just like nothing. Just once? Uh, just once. Me too. I'm telling jokes to Martin Mall in the cafe. I'm a businessman with bad, bad, bad jokes. Uh-huh. Mm. Oh, I'm hardly working, all that kind of stuff. So the then, 29-year-old man I can't. Yes. really paid off. He lives. And <laughs> Martin Mull's laughing hysterically at the jokes. And then I leave, and they all, they all go, what was all that about? Mm-hmm. And he says, well, I have to, because he's my insurance guy or something like oh, that. I love Martin but something Mull. interesting happened when I was doing the Roseanne. I don't know if I should tell it, yeah, but yeah, I should. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. It was the table read, and I was very nervous. I didn't have many lines, but I wanted to get that. I got there on time. I was there half an hour early. Mm-hmm. The only person on the whole set 
for a half an hour, mm. sitting there. Uh -huh. do, 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 okay. Eventually, they come in, set up tables, do the table read, and Martin Mull got a big laugh on one of the lines mm -hmm. in the script. Uh -huh. And Roseanne goes, "Hey, isn't that my line? Mm. I thought that was my line." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Tom went, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. And she said, no, I'm pretty sure in the earlier script that was my line. Mm -hmm. and, well, blah, blah, blah. and they're talking, and now there's kind of a little mm -hmm. hubbub going on. And I was sitting across from Martin Mull, mm -hmm. and Martin Mull just stared out <laughs> yeah. and completely blank. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing, no expression. Uh -huh. And I'm kind of watching this, going, oh, this isn't. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Tom is trying to calm down Roseanne. Yeah. And the writers are all futzing about what. And I'm looking at Martin Mull. And then, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so let's pick it up where we were. Mm -hmm. Right back in. Ha. Uh, I went, oh, that was so cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was like some kind of Asian thing. That yeah. was That's like amazing. A, an Asian thing. Yeah. You know what you should have done when next time when they said, all right, let's do this again? You should have said that line. That line. Yeah. 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 They would have loved you. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. What? Oh, because <laughs> Asians are calm? Wait, uh -huh. I guess. What are you saying? Just no, not so what's going on. Was that her taking the uh -huh. funny line away from him, you think? I don't know, or but it, it sounded like, like that. Yeah. That must have happened My before. My interpretation yeah. of yeah. him was, I got no dog in this fight. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I got a funny laugh. I'll get another funny laugh. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. not worried about that, mm -hmm. but I don't want to express anything. I'm just going. And I don't. He, if he was here, he'd go, what are you even talking about? Sure, it was I a, didn't see. I didn't do that. It was two yeah. seconds. Right? But I for sure saw him do that. I don't right. want to top Jim, but I can't help it. I, I was a gay bartender in the big gay show. Yeah, with, wait, who did she kiss? Um, Mariel Hemingway. Yes. Oh. But that was a huge... Oh, yeah, you are in that scene. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't remember, obviously. It doesn't matter. Yes, I do. I'm a Roseanne freak. I love that show. Oh, before she but... Uh, oh, it was so lame. I was so excited. And my line was... She said, I don't know, whatever Mariel Hemingway said, I said, don't we all? And mm -hmm. it's like, all bartenders, I'm cleaning a glass <laughs> as I say it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do course. we... Oh, anyway, who cares? But, mm -hmm. um, but my family had such respect, I should say, when it came out that Roseanne and Tom married a third person. Yeah. Yes. They thought it was me. Because <laughs> it was the assistant writer or yeah. something uh -huh. like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Were you working there in that era? Yep. Because yep. Yep. that's so crazy. They were so tabloid. But that was the first. I Lesbian think, kiss. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fucking Laura Keitlinger just creeping in the background. Nice. Classic Laura You're Keitlinger. You're always there hovering around the big moments. I know. Uh -huh. But never in the big moments. Oh, Why is that? Welcome to the club. You are the moment. Why do you say that? Oh, it just, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to get to, <laughs> to, to, to you know, to yeah. get the work and get the next job and get a bigger part and get seen and advance your career. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's a lot like of pushing. But I'm not good at it. You mean either. 90s was like very much, at least for comics, was like, oh, you're a stand-up comic. You get a sitcom. Like there was a through line of that happening. Yeah. And then even with like, whose line is it anyway? Getting so much attention that even non-traditional like stand-up comedy was getting this elevation to where you're like, oh, I can have a job and be like famous and stuff like that. Yeah. Was that a pipeline you were looking at? Or well, I mean, it was more for stand-ups. So you'd get yeah. those, you know, they get the series. Not so much what we were doing, mm -hmm. no matter what we were doing. Uh, <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't for us. It was not a road. We were looking for but the 90s were good though i mean i think i think maybe for all of us in the comedy world yeah. there just seemed to be a lot more jobs a lot more sitcoms a lot more casting directors that knew mm -hmm. us a lot more opportunity i worked more in the 90s than i did you know have since then for sure sadly. and we, i mean we had good luck with girly magazine party yeah i mean that was a big rangy show with lots of different people no stand-ups but they did a movie of that so oh we, you know we shot a movie it's never been released unfortunately is that good where is it well why not give that yeah. away for free it's in a can i have it on vimeo let's put it out there yeah, do you I, own we it? don't own it the people that own it i don't know that they would be happy about us showing you or why yeah. i don't know you should lean into it with your diabetes uh after i had <laughs> my smart. brain aneurysm i called um because i wanted to get the minor accomplishments of jackie woodman back which was a show i had mm -hmm. on I ifc mm -hmm. and co-wrote with david punch and i called the former head of isc and said can i have the rights to it and what would it cost i had a brain aneurysm and i'm calling you directly because i don't give a shit anymore we're gonna you know <laughs> what nice. I, I almost died and he gave it to me he gave me the rights wow. really? yeah see you just need yeah, to call that paid off say, Diabetes That's, is not the, paid up. oh, hey, oh, guess what? Yeah. I have diabetes. We'll just call yeah. and say you have Laura Keitlinger's aneurysm. Yeah, I'll pass it around. But also, we just did a movie in oh, March, great. Clown Town City Limits. I love and it. And <laughs> this woman who has enough money to produce a movie on her own, mm -hmm. loves it, uh -huh. and brought the whole live show to her house in Dallas. What? 
Wow. They Years ago. A private theater in their home. She's a restaurateur. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and they also own the Magic Castle, this couple. Oh, nice. And okay. they own a, a big software company in Frisco, Texas. There a big, it is. A big yeah. money uh -huh. deal. Mm. So anyway, she wanted to do a movie of Clown Town. I love that. That's great. And, and Penn Jillette produced it. Uh, this woman, Lisa acting? Satriano, directed it. And so we in shot that it up case, in Vancouver. You have to write your script out and shit, right? Of course. True, like, but we brought in again. We didn't. I mean, I, I originally thought we probably would, but then we were, it was clear we needed to bring in an actual writer to help mm -hmm, us with the script and a friend mm -hmm. of ours who was a, a friend of the show, Stephen Banks, mm -hmm. um, Billy the Mime. Uh, you might have seen too. He is also old friends with Penn, and he was brought in as the How actual great. screenwriter. I'm that. psyched. You're stars of a movie, and you were sitting on that this whole time. Why don't you exactly. say something? Where did you guys connect? And when did you guys decide to like work together? Jim was part of this other group, mm -hmm. Duck's Breath Mystery Theater in Iowa. They met there and they moved to San Francisco. And I was a theater student at Iowa and they would come back to do these sort of reunion alumni sort of shows. There was five of them. They were really funny. I liked them except for Jim. He was kind of... Oh, no. Yeah. No, no, he was great. He was always great. So he I knew who they were box, and yeah. I knew who he was. Was that Dave and Steve Higgins too? No, Irving those guys did. were still in Des Moines. I hadn't, oh, right. oh. I hadn't met them. Or maybe I'd met them. They'd come yeah. to Iowa City but and Gruber. But Jim would just kind of come and go. I saw a couple of those shows. And then when I moved to L.A., he had moved to L.A., I guess, as well. So I was already here before that, but I was doing a play written by Leon Martel, who was one of his comedy ah. uh, members of that group. And he came to the show and we got reintroduced, reacquainted as Iowa guys and U of I guys started playing basketball, then girly magazine party, then two headed ah. dog. And it's been 30 years. And then what was your first gig when I, you were coming out to L.A.? Oh, Jesus. What did I do? Uh, we got here. No pressure. 91. We didn't know my wife was pregnant. I know. We didn't know my <laughs> girlfriend. <laughs> we didn't know my girlfriend was pregnant at the time, mm -hmm. though she we, got pregnant. We, is it more than two people that got her pregnant? We, she and I. Oh, okay. Did not know she was pregnant. I wasn't around then. I know, because you guys were a group. I just <laughs> no, don't no, have to ask. No, okay, not yet. Fine. Her child was conceived mm. um, during the drive in Albuquerque, New Mexico, mm -hmm. in a Motel 6 Amazing. on Christmas morning. Amazing. That's a um, love story. And then we got That's to why town. the kid is named Albuquerque Christ <laughs> <laughs> Turner. We got to town and we were house sitting somewhere and I was doing some auditions. And one morning, about three weeks, a month into it, I was going to Dream On. Oh, yeah. yeah. And she said, maybe she'd drop me if the Planned Parenthood. What are you talking about? Planned Parenthood. We didn't even have a place to live. We talked about <laughs> Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I don't know. I just feel like shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I dropped her off at the Planned Parenthood, drove to the audition, dream on, came back, and she was, I think there was a Goodwill next door to it. And she said, I'll be in the Goodwill waiting. Mm -hmm. And I went in, Goodwill, I'm looking for, going through the rack, sh sh like this. And she looks up and goes, hi, Daddy. Oh. No. Oh, fuck. You're like, they sell babies at Goodwill? <laughs> Oh they God. really should. <laughs> That's the drop off. It's at the Goodwill. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. He was it's like born a fire many station. months later. Uh -huh. I was here a year and a half and did not book one job oh, gosh. that I auditioned for. Oh. The only job that I had in that year and a half was a friend of mine was doing that movie with uh, Debbie Harry where she was a sex talker she would take call, uh, uh, well, I something hope it was called it should have been called sex talker i know uh, I, mean, I want to intimate, google it really <laughs> i wasn't shot i only did audio which he paid me for uh -huh. having an orgasm while talking to her oh that's fantastic uh, how many takes did it take her lines were all done uh -huh. so i was simply reacting to her going oh yeah so wow how you doing baby yeah. uh, 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 what a metaphor for being done. out here <laughs> your right? first job is jerking off <laughs> <laughs> Anytime he hears call me, he just, he can't uh, yeah, control himself. Yeah, I love himself. that. So, so I had you, sex with Debbie Harry. Uh-huh. Yeah, Fantastic. exactly. Fantastic. You got to tell the story. This is hard for me to say because I don't want to give you more minutes to talk here. <laughs> I got to check my chart. I feel like I'm behind. Uh -huh. I know. But I'm going to share, I'm going to give you this as a gift. Yeah. Um, the the story Sex Talker made me think of it. Your massage parlor job. Oh. Jim's booked a lot of jobs, but you, but just lay that one on him real quick. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I can. A friend of mine was doing sound for a movie and he said look they, they need a cameo of somebody getting a hand job in a massage parlor oh, yes. and would you do that and i went 
He said, and we'll give you a couple hundred bucks. Oh, my God. Oh, that just sounds... Oh, come on, man. I really... I sold them on you. I showed them your credits and blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. I go to this massage parlor that was catty-cornered across the street from Jumbo's Clown Room. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. That's my neighborhood. Parked nice. in this mm-hmm. little parking lot. Really. It's raining. <laughs> They're That's coming, good. and it's that movie that Jason Schwartzman was in with Adam, the guy on Party Down. He's in everything. Yeah. Great actor. Two couples. It's two couples, and one couple runs into the other, and the couple they run into is like, they're kinky, and they just do crazy shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're having fun with them, and they're drinking wine, and they run out of wine, and the two women go, oh, uh, we'll go get wine. We'll be back in a little bit. As they're driving, the kooky one takes this other one into a massage parlor and goes, stay here. And she walks into a room and they have a little window they can open and see this guy getting a hand job. Oh. Mm. And I'm in there getting a hand job. And I said, so I'm not, I'm like under a towel. And mm-hmm. they said, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You don't have to, you're not nude. You're, you're covered up. So I go there. It's at 10 o'clock at night. I'm exhausted. I don't <laughs> want to do this already. And none of the crew is there. Uh-huh. They said, they'll be here shoot soon. They're just packing up at the other location. Oh, no. We sit and wait for about an hour. They finally show up. They come around. I'm sitting in my car. It's pouring rain. And they go, what do you want for lunch? I don't want any. I don't want lunch. We're not. We're not shooting. You said mm-hmm. no. We're breaking for lunch right now. Uh. They break for lunch. They send out. I say a burrito, and <laughs> so I get this burrito. I leave it in the car. We go in. Finally, I'm going to be the last shot. There's all these people that that happen in the. So one after another after another. It's now two in the morning. They finally take me in. They put a towel on my face. <laughs> And a towel across my crotch. Mm-hmm. And I'm laying there. It's it the takes glory about, of show business, baby. It takes beautiful. 40 minutes to shoot this scene. And I can't remember if somebody's hand came over and you saw the uh-huh. towel wow. moving around. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. can't even remember that. I'm yeah. so fucking pissed off. Mm-hmm. And this, oh, fuck, it's two in the morning. I want to go to bed. Uh-huh. And then they end. And everybody leaves the massage parlor room. Wait, Jim, do you have to make the noises of having an orgasm? No. Oh. I didn't have to do anything. Just lay there. <laughs> and I have a credit in the movie. Yes. That's where I was going to ask. That's my favorite thing. Yes. Because somebody congratulated me on it. They said, oh, hey, great job as the hand job guy. And I yes. said, wait, uh... you, you, could you see me? No. I just saw your name in the credits. <gasps> so the great thing was, when anybody's done in a movie mm-hmm. or a TV show... They go, oh, that's a thank you and good night and end a picture to Lori Keitlinger. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. And the crew all goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I think it's weird, but they still do it. Mm-hmm. And I'm laying there just starting to put my pants on. I'm going, fuck, what a fucking job. Uh-huh. And I hear from the other room. I can't see anybody. That's a thank you and a good night to Jim Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> and then I hear somebody go, Turner. Turner, Turner yeah. What? No. Jim, Jim Turner. Oh, that's a thank you and a good night to no, Jim Turner. No. Yeah. Um, and then five people go like this. Oh, my God. Oh, I don't yeah. love that. Yeah, that's our you biz, know, man. I love yeah. the credit. That's, that's show biz. I, I mean, one of the, my biggest heartaches in life it was in Bulgaria shooting the Black Dahlia. And I was hooker number one. And I said, I don't care about anything. Just that credit's so fucking great. Hmm. I got cut. (laughs) But hookers two and three are still in the movie. I know. Because, and then it's like, wow, it was a three hour movie and I was so bad. But the thing was, you know what? (laughs) I think they they actually called me in for ADR like everybody was. Uh But I wasn't there. So I couldn't come in and do the ADR. Oh, that's why. I hope so. Yeah, but for like I, I would kill. I would have killed uh, to at least get that footage because Vilmos Sigmund is is the DP that Brian De Palma works with, and he wanted to make a big deal of my legs. I was in little tap pants, and he was building this whole thing around my legs. Mm-hmm. And he goes, "Do you really want to spend that much time on this?" <laughs> uh, <laughs> Which was really kind of mean to say to me, sure. you know, in front of me. And he goes, "Yeah, yeah, I'm going to get this shot." So then Brian De Palma gave me a note. By putting his hands so close to my crotch, I couldn't believe it. But I realized afterwards that Vilmos Sigmund, everybody say it with me. Vilmos Sigmund. He did the deer hunter. He was a DP on so <laughs> Nobody reacted. <laughs> I have so many amazing movies. You know, Nobody you, reacted. That is amazing. No, that is amazing. I was, my, my jaw, our jaws had dropped. Our jaws had dropped.
that dropped. Right, we, that wasn't so there was no that, video, that, but we were, ast- it, we were astonished. So they that- already shot the deer hunter. It wasn't like you were going to get a part in the deer hunter. Yeah, you were just. A- Shit, I'm saying like what a legendary DP okay. he was. Yeah. Okay, with. You're like right. it did so much amazing stuff. So yeah. then let the man touch your femoral arteries oh, no, if he I wants to. I don't care to. about that. He the shot the deer that hunter. That kills me is I got cut and I would love to have that footage. Hooker number one. Yeah, because of him. By him. Yeah. Yeah, just because of him. I was in a movie and they wouldn't let me rename my character bitchy waitress number three they wouldn't let me do Why? it i know i'm oh, just I love that. It's ridiculous i know i'm just the what was the movie uh it's called chef oh it's a john favreau movie oh, oh wow oh yeah yeah, yeah. That movie. The, the food truck uh-huh thing. yeah um yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you're in it so what we can see no you. my ponytail is in it that's it i put something down and then you see from behind i swish away but it is, <laughs> it's a swish it's beautiful yeah it is what was the audition for that like oh i would listen i'm a natural bitchy waitress number three oh, okay I, it's the part i was born to play that so was nothing for you mm-hmm. yeah i do miss having long hair because that was like the key to my waitressing and i would put uh. it on the side oh. <laughs> and if you fucked it if i didn't like you as a customer i'd go I'm, I'm sorry i'll be right back and the next time i came to the table the ponytail would be on the other side of my head <laughs> wow and that was my way of yeah. like establishing yeah. control oh, yeah. i bet continuity loved you well no because the thing would be if the customer was being if they were going into said like i said i wanted black olives not green you know what I mean? uh-huh. i'm sorry i'll be right back and then i would just go around the corner switch and come back i'm sorry what were you saying uh, so then it would diffuse them they'd be like i said i wanted and then they'd look at the side of my head and be like, was that on his left side or right side? Oh, that's, that's a, a strange kind of mind fuck. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then you, you wait tables. These are not the droids you're looking for. I, yeah. th- I thought you meant you were in a movie doing that, t- t- switching your no. hair from left to right. Oh, okay. No. You just did that too. Now, I was speaking of ponytails, uh, when I did Righteous Gemstones, I didn't know what I was doing at all. I had uh-huh. no idea what the character was or uh-huh. anything. And I get there the first day. I'd been there for wardrobe fittings and all that stuff. And then I came in the day we're shooting, and the hair and makeup people said, Danny wants to put you in a ponytail. Oh, I love yes. it. And I That's went, fucking great. How? Oh, my God. And they showed me a little teeny wisp. It's the old man. Yeah. The rat tail. Oh, the little rat great. tail. Yes. Like that long. Fantastic. And they put it on me, and I went, I get it. I get exactly who I am. Yes. I, I'm, oh. And I went over to McBride and said, that is so genius. Yeah. I'm uh-huh. sure. uh, all those people wear fake hair. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. All his mm-hmm. mutton chops are completely fake. Right. Yeah. I didn't even recognize Edie Patterson or the woman playing my, my daughter, Lily, mm-hmm. uh-huh. because they were in complete wigs. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> and I came in one day and, and Edie went, Hey, how was your weekend? And I went, uh, Good. Like, uh, who, who's that? Mm-hmm. I don't know who that person mm-hmm. is. I guess somebody else. And they're asking me about my weekend. That's good. Uh, yeah, pretty uh, good. Thank yeah. you. Oh my God, I just realized who you are. Uh, 20 years of Brian Reese acting class, you know, <laughs> and, but all you really needed was a, a four inch rat tail uh-huh. to kick ass. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. You're a prop actor. Let's uh-huh. just face it. Get your money back. Oh. Right. <laughs> what season is that? The gemstones two do you watch that mm-hmm. i it's love it so yeah, it's great. great yeah it's great. well because i'm, I'm not, from, I'm not did you watch this enough. last season not yet oh not yet. my god well because i'm from north texas where like evangelists are born oh yeah right? uh, huge mega right? churches yeah it's a thing. and that's also very much like a texas thing like mega churches mm-hmm. um so it's like right up my alley it's funny to say this about that show but it gets dark oh yeah, yeah. I mean, oh it's uh, great it, it's so damn funny it's so 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 dark and season three is oh Wow. Yeah. What we kind are. Because it's like you have to be professional on set, right? And you don't want to be like too loud, all those like fucking rules and things like that. But do you nerd out when you're working on like TV shows and like famous people? Do you ever try to talk to them? Or are you trying just to... It's I, it's still exciting to see, uh, you know, yeah. somebody that was an idol or somebody that's a you know, kick-ass actor. It's fun to see. Uh, mm-hmm. But you, you kind of got to play it cool. Right. Uh, um, I, which I can't You do. know, and some of them are open to chit-chat and open to getting to know you, talking a little bit. And a lot of them are not. Yeah. yeah. You kind of got to vibe it out, right? You're in the yeah. zone. This has been great you guys thank you so much <laughs> how much do we need to pull out of here we're I mean, good you know what I mean? no yeah. you guys yeah. are fucking got, in fact you got a lot of stuff you could cut wait I know, I mean, <laughs> Jim, Jim, he, you know he goes, he goes right on after your on. names i think there's a big huge great no i'm kidding yeah. no, no wait a second will you kids we go ahead and tell us where you're going to be next mm-hmm. where we can yeah i mean we don't have any live uh two headed dog action scheduled we mm-hmm. perform at places like brookledge follies if you ever uh do you know anybody know about that thing brookledge Follies. yeah it's yeah. an amazing venue uh it, 
the, the family that owned the Magic Castle, the Larsons, have a private residence in Hancock Park, and in the back of that is another right. private theater in their home. Oh, that's I incredible. This is a standalone, beautiful, beautiful, wow. built by a magic uh, prop maker in the 30s or something. It's just an amazing space. But they do these sort of vaudeville variety shows off and on. And incredible. Jim or and I have we... been comedic guests off and on. So we may show up there on occasion. We need to but get in not on this. public I know. thing. They're just private. invite yeah. only. Yeah. Yeah. I should, in fact, I shouldn't have mentioned it to you No, guys, that's okay. We're both going to so, try no, it. Yeah. We can. Someone you'll be our guest. No. We'll yeah. perform yeah, yeah. there. But the, okay, so you're performing for the Illuminati, so yes. something like that. How okay. do we get in on this mansion, private I know, mansion? Well, we need to do a show. You know there. the right people. You got yeah. that it? Us. We'll, 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 we'll invite you. Laura's okay. like has a Borscht Belt hookup. I'm like, that is not it. We need oh, the private shit. mansion. I know, I know. That's a good hookup, though. Yeah. So we got the movie coming out uh, at some point, maybe I don't know, end of the year or beginning of next year. It's called, mm-hmm. actually called. If the title stays the same, it's called The Big Whoop. Mm, Great. The Big Whoop. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, I did a couple other little indies pre-pandemic. One is called uh, Cursed in Baja. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's a sort of a horror noirish um, thriller. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm, I get killed. Ooh, yes. ah, damn it. Spoiler alert. That's so exciting. Though. And then another one called a uh, comedy called The Micro Budget Mystery. Okay. Um, it's comedic sort of mockumentary style thing. Uh, written and directed by John Wiener. The other one, Kirsten Baja, written and directed by Jeff Daniel Phillips, who is uh, one of the Geico Cavemen and one of the uh, uh, Rob Zombie's guys. He's a new Herman Munster. And great oh, great did boy writer, it. performer, funny guy. Wait, he wrote the new... He's, he, he is the new Herman Munster? He is the new... Her- in the Rob Zombie version, yes. he is the Herman Munster. I love the way that movie looks. It, it looks amazing. It's yeah. very yes. green. Yeah. But yeah. I, yeah, I watched it, um, but I was so obsessed with the way it looked. Yeah, you got cool. to die on camera? Oh yeah! Oh wow! Horrible, that's horrible, 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 brutal uh, slaying. That's but you'll so have cool. to look for the movie. Have you ever died on camera? Yes. Intentionally? Like murdered? Intentional? Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not like on stage. <laughs> Not like. That. I, how do you know when to die? Do you know when you take your final? Uh, yeah, you, uh, like, you do it a few times. It's really weird. Cause so like, you do it a few times. They go, hey, pull it back. <laughs> yeah, like die sooner. Just die. Or yeah. Just die. You don't have to. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although I did, this one was a horror, full-on horror scene, uh-huh. uh, getting attacked by this creature and chained to a thing. You know, oh, wow. getting my, my chest ripped open and pulling the guts out, all of it. Wow. So I was supposed to keep screaming for a while, and it was freezing. Wow. It was late at night. It was yes. wet with this wet blood, and uh, just screaming, screaming, screaming. And then eventually, it was like Jim said, they were like, "Okay, all right, fight. Just go ahead and." Yeah, stop breathing. Just die. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh-huh. But they, As, okay, question. But, but they'll cut. Like, you know, they'll edit. But cameras are rolling, and you're in the middle of your acting, and they're like, "Okay, die." Mm-hmm. And so you're like live on the film. You're like, "Okay, you have permission to like end it." Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, I love. I that. mean, sometimes I'll do other takes, but sometimes they can cut that sound. But out. they'll be like, uh-huh, you'll hear and them the say, "Intestines it. are being pulled out, and you're losing and die." Yeah, losing that, consciousness, like that, and then maybe they say like, things like that. Like I was killed. But I was hung you- by Lalo Zedo, the football player Lalo Zedo. Hung. He he played a, a bad guy and I played a special effects props guy mm. and Jim was, that's really not as good as Mark being having his guts thank you out. Laura you thank know, you sorry. I know you're trying a famous to tell person. I haven't gotten to where I oh, died oh I'm sorry oh, go ahead go oh, ahead go ahead go remember ahead. we're gonna have to cut some time stuff know, for time I was on a little lift and he grabs me by the and pulls me up like this and they pulled the lift up huh? so it looked like he was lifting hanging. you <gasps> Yeah. It's not so a competition, we, Jim. And then, yeah, okay, and then I went, ah, blah, blah, blah. and I said, what if my guts came out? And they said, well, that's not this No, movie. no, you're no, 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 he's lying. He's no. lying. Oh, shit. They're like, now, you're saying, what are we doing? I have to, I have to pitch my little yeah. thing. Yes, please do. It's not a little thing. You're an amazing producer and... Uh, uh, I do little backyard fundraiser, movie fundraiser, yeah. screenings mm-hmm. f- to raise money for voter registration in yeah. the Texas Rio Grande Valley. Yes. On December 10th, I believe we will be, as long as the strike ends and the SAG after will let us do this, we'll have John C. Riley and Will Ferrell and Step Brothers uh-huh. at the Vidiots Movie Theater over in Eagle Rock, awesome. which is a, the shit, man. It is the greatest theater oh, if you wow. haven't been there mm-hmm. brand new they fixed up an old movie theater mm-hmm. 270 seats new carpeting new seats new screen great sound just opened up this summer it's great they show That's lots of great amazing. stuff there What's besides this fun unbelievable stuff. Idiots. Idiots. idiots they used to have a location on the west side many yeah. years ago yeah. Yeah. now they're oh, so great. Eagle Rock. Eagle Rock. It, it's on eagle rock boulevard just south of colorado a few oh, blocks wow. i was in on st louis corner, corner of yosemite yesterday and they have like stars on the boulevard or whatever um and john ham is one of them but so is vincent price oh. and agnes moorhead wow where, uh, where? 
in St. Louis. They're like wow. famous St. Oh, Louis. Oh, that's right. He's a big oh, St. Louis guy. guy. Yeah. yeah. That's John so Hamm, cool. He has his star. I was more excited about Endora. I was going to say, you're an Agnes Moorhead. That's the uh, Me up too. and about it, right? Yeah. Well, I love Vincent Price. Yeah, oh, yeah, too. that's true. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, what a great, yeah. He's so good. Two. Joan Rivers had his ashes, and then I think she willed them to Robin Quivers. There what? you go. Happy Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Tasty uh, info. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, also on, on Jim's note, vote Texas, right? What's the name of your organization that does that? Good Deed Corps. Okay, great. We have a website. It's thegooddeedcorps.org. There's stuff and sign up for our screenings. We've had Will Farrell doing Elf last year, mm. Weird Al showing Weird <gasps> at Dynasty Typewriter, oh, one of the rare insane. ones not in my backyard. Oh my God. Uh, Judd Apatow showed clips in the backyard. Pat Oswalt showed I Love My Dad. Sandra O oh showed Sideways. Mm. Jack Black showed School of Rock. Amazing. And John Hamm, I said, What do you, do you want to show clips? And he said, Yeah, hey, I'm not into the clip mm. thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. I said, What movie do you want to show? There's a ton that are great yeah uh-huh. and he just wrote back bridesmaids yeah. oh he's great in, he's hardly in it but no question yeah. but the audience will love it. yeah it'll be fun. I mean, believe me they'll love it and they'll love having him there how it'll about be, it'll mad be great. men just as one of the episodes of mad men i don't know my I, I went up to him in a restaurant mm-hmm. and he was at little dom's and my wife said oh oh john ham just came in and mm-hmm. i went oh i'll be right back uh, and she goes no no sit down mm-hmm. sit down right uh, now how funny. i said no no i gotta oh my god jim and I just went over and I said, hi, Mr. Ham, blah, blah, blah. I had a picture of him backstage that I took with Puddles Pity Party yes, and Puddles. E from the Eels at the Henry Fonda. Mm-hmm. And I said, can I show you this picture? And I showed him the picture. Oh, man, what's that? Five years ago. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, great. I'm in. I said, how do I get a hold of you? Here's my email. Amazing. I emailed he is him the a next morning. Heart. Super nice guy. Thanks hey, for coming, okay. guys. Oh, okay. so great. So, so great. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This Thanks was a blast. So yeah. This was really, really great. And Jim Turner. Thank you so much. Thank you.